Good morning. Welcome to worship at the United Methodist Church of Westchester. We're so glad that you're here on this Pentecost Sunday. Brownie points for everyone wearing red. Very good, very good. And if you're not wearing red, we love you anyway. So um, if you're watching us via the live stream, we're so glad that you're here with us today. And we hope that soon you will be able to come and worship with us in person. Our senior pastor, Reverend Truman Brooks, is away. He is enjoying a family holiday. He will be back in the office tomorrow, so we wish him safe journey today as he comes home. Today, um, we will be celebrating communion, and um, it has been announced a couple of times, but I will uh, mention it again. Our Helping Hand Fund um, uh, needs a little pepping up. This is a fund that we use to help people who either are part of our congregation or who come through the door in need of assistance. And today they're actually offering plates. Um, as you finish communing, they're offering plates available for you to put your gift in. Thank you very much for your generosity. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating Peace with Justice Sunday. This is a special day in the life of all United Methodists. And um, again, we will be taking a special offering. <laughs> it's one of the six special offerings that we do as United Methodists each year. And this money, 50% um, of it stays local, and 50% of it goes worldwide to um, help with Peace with Justice Ministries. And um, Reverend Avodio, Avodia Villalva, who is from our sister church, El Buen Samaritano, will bring the message. So I know that you will want to be here uh, to welcome her and to hear her proclaim the good news. Our um, Cross Connection Youth Choir trip is coming up quickly. And if you'll notice on the front box, if you would like to be a letter writer and prayer mentor for someone that is going on that trip, um, you can sign up at the table, the round table in the gathering area. The uh, youth need our prayers, and the adults who are chaperoning need our prayers also. So please uh, sign up for this important ministry. The uh, beautiful geraniums that are adorning the uh, sanctuary today um, are available for you to take home. Um, just uh, put five dollars in the basket that's on the round table following worship and you can take a flower home to uh, plant in your garden to remind you of this Pentecost Sunday. We're pleased to have the children with us in worship today. They will also be celebrating Holy Communion with us. And now Kelly Lynn and Luann Sims have an announcement. So, Luann and I are here to promote our church's VBS again this week. And as you can tell by our superhero costumes, we have a superhero theme this year called Hero Central. But I am disappointed to report that apparently superheroes can still get sick. So Luann is going to fill you in on all the pertinent information since I'm a little hard to understand this week. Our VBS, Hero Central, will be Sunday, July 30th through Thursday, August 3rd, from 6 to 8.30 every night, with tons of fun activities. And listen to this. One of our nights is all about Pentecost. And today is Pentecost. <laughs> we also have free dinner starting at 5.15, Monday through Thursday evenings. We need tons of participants and volunteers. So please fill out a registration form on the table in the gathering area or on the church website. Did I cover everything? Yes, thank you. I'm glad you're able to cover for me because I think I may be sicker than I realized. You look an awful lot like a gorilla to me. That's exactly what I am. That's not a superhero. It's not? <laughs> Now let us prepare to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth.
in the call to worship. With rushing wind and holy fire, with tongues of flame and hopes rekindled, with visions birthed and dreams restored, with spacious grace and depth untold, with rushing wind and holy fire. be seated. Let us now confess our sins first corporately together and then alone in silence. Spirit of wind and flame, you set us free from prisons of our own making, yet we cling to the fears that jail us. Source of living water, you draw us to Christ that our hearts may overflow with living water. Yet we shun the intimacy of your invitation. Come once more in rushing wind and cleansing fire, that we may embrace your gifts in service to a world in need. Amen. God sends forth the Holy Spirit, and the face of the earth is renewed. God sends the same Spirit to us, that we too may be renewed and made whole. Rejoice, sisters and brothers. God's steadfast love endures forever. Renewed with the gifts of the Spirit and blessed by visions and dreams of peace in our world, let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Let's join responsively in the introduction to the word. Can a locked door keep the Holy Spirit from releasing us from our fears? Can a quaking spirit keep us from receiving the Spirit's gifts today? Can the church be born again after 2,000 years of inertia and indifference? Does the story of Pentecost have anything to say to us today? Listen for the word of God. Listen that our hearts may be kindled with holy fire and overflow with living water. The first reading today is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pomphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. I would like to invite the children to come forward now for the message for growing Christians. And Corey Smith will be sharing that this morning. The friendship folders are also being passed out now. If you're visiting us today, we're really happy that you're here. And we ask that you register your attendance using one of the blue sheets. If you are a member, we're equally as happy that you're here. And we ask that you register your attendance using one of the white sheets, updating your information as needed. There are prayer cards in the prayer folders. If you have a prayer concern today, please fill that out and give it to Alan or myself or put it in the offering plate so that we can pray for your need in the coming days. And then take a look and see who's sitting with you and greet them following the service. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. I need your help today. I need you guys to make a circle around me. Can you guys make a circle around me and join it all the way around? Come here. Come here. Can you come over? Can you guys come over here? Come over here. Come out right there. All right. You guys make a circle. All right. Do we have a circle yet? Now, can everybody grab hands or join or touch their elbows? There we go. All right, so we got a circle, right? Okay. Is everybody in the circle? All right. 
Now, today is a very, very special day. We call this Pentecost. It's like the birthday of the church. And on Pentecost, amazing, amazing, amazing thing happened, okay? Now, all the disciples, and maybe some other people, some other people who followed Jesus, they were all gathered together, right? And they were kind of like this red balloon here. They were like, eh. You know why? You know why they were like that? Because Jesus was with them, and then Jesus died. And then Jesus came back. And then Jesus flew away. And so, and Jesus said, I need you guys to wait. And so after a while, they were just like, how long we got to wait? And they were like this. But then, they were all in this room together on this day called Pentecost, which is 50 days after Passover, but that's a different lesson. Okay, so they were all gathered together, and then they heard what sounded like a rushing wind. Was it a rushing wind? No. You know what? It wasn't. It just, it just sounded like that. Jillian, you spoiled the story. Just, just kidding. So they heard this rushing wind, and then what looked like tongues of fire was like over all of them. Right? But was it actually fire? No, it wasn't actually fire. So nobody got burnt. Uh, uh, uh. Nobody got burnt. But it says in the Bible, it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So they were filled. And so when they were filled, what do you think they were filled with? Hmm. They were filled with joy. Joy and hope and love and peace. All of these amazing gifts that the Spirit gives us. And guess what else? Guess what else? They became, they were, they, they were filled with power. They started speaking in languages that they didn't even know. And people heard them speaking in all these different languages because they were there and they were from other countries and they could understand them. And they said, wow, what is happening? And they heard, the, guess what the disciples were talking about? They talked about Jesus and then all of these people decided then that they were going to follow Jesus. And they wanted the gifts of the Holy Spirit too. And that is what happened on Pentecost. You're not getting a balloon. You're jumping up and down, grabbing the balloon. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So, let us pray. Oh, wait. Before we pray, I forgot. There's one more thing. So, that day, 3,000 more people became Christians that day. And so what happens if you guys are in the circle? And what if somebody else joined the circle? What happens to it? It gets bigger, right? Could you imagine if 3,000 more people joined the circle? How big would the circle be? Humongous, that's right. And if more and more and more and more people kept joining the circle, how big would the circle be? It would be crazy. It would be crazy. Yeah. So um, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit that fills us with joy and hope and peace and love and power. May this gift help us to grow in all of these ways and more. Amen. All right. So if, as long as you're not allergic to balloons, all right, you can go over to Louise, and she will give you a balloon, and then you can go sit down. Thanks, guys. Happy birthday, church.
Today's second reading is from Corinthians 12, verses 3b to 13. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now are they, there are these varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but it is the same, the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same Lord. The same God who activates all of them and everyone, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit of the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. To all these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, as many members, and all the members for the body, though many are one body, it's so with Christ. And for, for in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts. Breathe your spirit into us and grant that we may hear and in hearing, be led in the way you want us to go. Amen. I read a story this week about a boy who was wandering around the narthex of a cathedral-like downtown church one Sunday morning. He stopped and examined a large bronze plaque that was hanging on the wall. What are all those names up there? He asked one of the ushers. Those are the names of people who died in the service, the usher replied. Curious, the boy asked the usher, which service, the 845 service or the 11 <laughs> service? I want you to know that today, Pentecost, we are not celebrating death. We are celebrating life, the birth of the church. We are celebrating the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and the gifts the Spirit brings to give us life, strength, and power for the service that Jesus calls us to do. The seven weeks after the death of Jesus on the cross were hard on the disciples. Yes, they had experienced the risen Christ, but like Corey said, he flew away. They, when he ascended, they were left a bit rudderless. They were unsure as to what to do, where they were to go. They didn't scatter, though. They stayed together, spent time with each other, and, as Luke writes in Acts 1, all were united in their devotion to prayer, along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Then on that one day when they were all together, that amazing event happened. It was certainly dramatic when the Holy Spirit came upon those who had known Jesus Christ. There was wind, and there was flame, and with the Holy Spirit, a part of those gathered there to that day began witnessing to what God was doing. They were truly changed, and the Jews visiting Jerusalem noticed. They heard the commotion, and they came to see. Peter had once denied Jesus, but following the resurrection had recaptured his relationship with him through this exchange recounted in John. Jesus said, do you love me? Peter replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now, filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter witnessed to everyone gathered. Beginning with the words of the prophet Joel, he told them about what God had done through his son, Jesus Christ. 
The people listening were enthralled and wanted to know what they should do. Peter told them, change your hearts and lives. Each of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord God invites. There were 3,000 who accepted Jesus Christ that day. They were forgiven and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, as we remember that day as the birthday of the church, it is a day to celebrate, and we do joyously, with special decorations, music, and of course, cake. Don't forget to join us in the gathering area for cake following the service. But it is more than just that. It is a day to recognize and claim the fruit of the coming of the Spirit. We have been given the power to forgive. We have been given gifts to use for the common good, and we are called to recognize our unity as God's people. There is a phrase that was very popular when my daughter was in high school. What would Jesus do? When we accept forgiveness and offer it to others in the name of Jesus, it shows that we are behaving as Christ. Jesus always forgave. And when we extend forgiveness to those who hurt us, we witness to our oneness with Christ. We are living as Jesus wants us to. I think we are living with too little forgiveness today. We want to hold on to the anger we feel when we have been wronged. This is not only personal, but it extends to the way our country deals with the rest of the world. We are afraid to forgive and let go, to make amends, and to look for right relationships. Nelson Mandela said, when a deep injury is done to us, we never heal until we forgive. We don't have to be afraid to forgive because it is the Holy Spirit that nudges us to forgive and reminds us that we too are forgiving. There is great power in forgiveness. There is power to turn our lives and the lives of others around, to go from anger to love, to go from being estranged with our fellow human beings to being reconciled. The Holy Spirit gives gifts so that we can live in community and share the good news of Jesus Christ with those who don't know it. Paul, in writing to the people in Corinth, proclaimed that the believers were given different gifts, but all the gifts came from God. He wrote, there are different spiritual gifts, but the same spirit, and there are different ministries and the same Lord, and there are different activities, but the same God who produces all of them in every one. He went on to say, a demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. The common good. That means for the benefit of the community. We are called to use our gifts to serve others. Our different gifts, shared through our different stories, provide for the building up of God's world through our caring for God's children and the world that God created. Bronson C. Davis puts this another way. He said, 1 Corinthians points the reader to the reality of the gift of life, having once been made remains with the spirit-led person in the form of a heart oriented to new and marvelous deeds of witness. Both Paul and Davis were acknowledging the importance of putting your faith into action. We need to claim the gifts we are given by the Holy Spirit and use them to further the work Jesus commissioned his disciples and us as their spiritual descendants to do when he said, as recorded in John 20, 
as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. An example of this action comes from John Holmes, a 22-year veteran of the United States Army and the New York Army National Guard. He served in Iraq, and he said this, there is no exercise better for the heart than reaching down and lifting people up. Think about how you feel when you are helping someone else. It feels good, doesn't it? It is satisfying, isn't it? It has even been shown to lower your blood pressure. In serving others, we fulfill ourselves. We fulfill ourselves in the way Christ called us to. Today we are called to recognize our unity as God's people. There is no doubt that God's people are different. We come from different places, we speak different languages, and we worship in different ways. The coming of the Holy Spirit at the first Pentecost enabled the disciples to witness to the people from all over in their own languages. This event showed the believers then, and all believers through the centuries, right down to us today, that we have the commonality of God's creation and of the power there is in our unity as believers, even in the midst of our diversity. Paul wrote to the very diverse church in Corinth, Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts. And all the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many. We were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek or slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. We need to celebrate today what is shared among all of us and work towards accepting our differences without the need to make everyone conform. It is God who created us diversely, and it is God who calls us to live together, bringing the good news of life to everyone we meet. It is the Holy Spirit working in our lives that enables us to do this. Pope Francis said, the Holy Spirit transforms and renews us, creates harmony and unity, and gives us courage and joy for mission. Let us pray. God of peace, we your people gather in expectation, fearful, anxious, curious, and excited. Come into our midst, calm our restless hearts, and help us hear your call to go into the world. Help us remember your saving words, your words of good news, and your words of restoration for us and the world. May your peaceful presence make us a forgiven and forgiving people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to give our gifts today, um, I would call your attention to the screen because we will also be recognizing our high school graduates. Let us worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Art create in me 
a miracle, something real, and something beautiful. with me yet by your power I change I change and you're not finished with me yet you're not finished with me yet You're not finished with me yet. By your power, I change, I change, and you're not finished with me yet. presentation. And um, as the elements and the offering is being brought forward, I would ask that all of our high school graduates that are here at this service please stand. And then if they'll remain standing, um, I'd Stay like standing. the uh, college graduates to please stand that are here with us this morning. And remain standing. And I would ask that our disciple graduates, you'll see a list of those folks that did disciple um, two, would you please stand along with uh, their facilitator? Any of our uh, disciple graduates? Super. All right. 
And is there anyone else who has received a degree? Everyone, keep standing. Um, keep up there. Um, has anyone else received a degree that we don't know about yet? We'd ask you to stand now. All right, let us pray. Oh, those of you um, that are around, those that are standing, please place a hand on their shoulder so that uh, they will feel the community of love that surrounds them. Let us pray. As your classes and grading are now complete, may you strive towards excellence in all you do. As the speeches conclude, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace in the world. As the fanfare ceases, may you sing of joy, even in the dark and lonely places. As the applause quiets, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. As you graduate, may, you, may your achievements grow and cause growth in your communities. And may we all know of the overwhelming blessings of the one who created all things. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Listen for the wind. We are listening to the sound of the Holy Presence. Look for the dancing flame. We are looking for the flame that burns our souls. Be receptive. We are open to the fresh movement of the divine. When creation was in chaos, your spirit brought order. You did a new thing. Out of chaos, you brought forth the light and the darkness and every shade in between. You played in the waters, splashing so high it became the sky. You formed the earth with lakes and ponds, streams, rivers, creeks, oceans. It was a wonderful work of art, and you loved it. Out of chaos, you created variety, theme, and variation. Oh, the vegetation you created. Then in the sky, you made a billion, billion wonders we have yet to discover. But one was our own to light our day, and you gave us a moon to our night sky. Out of chaos, you created such a symphony of life, so many wondrous sounds that praise your name, making music on the savannas, the mountains, hills, and plains. Sounds of praise from swamps and deserts, forests, and jungles. And then there was us, a vibrant expression of your image, with your gift of tongues. You are now praised in one grand cacophony of sound. It not only fills the earth, which is your footstool, but also the heavens, which is your throne, where you are praised continuously. Holy, holy, Lord we love, creator of heaven and earth, everything you touch proclaims your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are all who come in your holy name. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, and Jesus is your gift to bring chaos into our settled world. Into the life of a young girl, Mary, you brought the chaos of an unexpected child. Into the life of Joseph, you brought the chaos of a child who was not his own. Into the life of Herod, you brought the chaos of another king in Israel. Into the lives of the scribes and the teachers of the law, you brought the chaos of questions. Yet to those caught up in the chaos of blindness, Jesus brought sight. To those caught up in the chaos of possession, Jesus brought peace. To those caught up in the chaos of grief, Jesus brought resurrection and life. To those Christ called to be his disciples, Jesus brought chaos. He left his place of honor at the Passover meal to kneel humbly at their feet to show them hospitality. Their king became their slave. Their master became their maid as Jesus washed their feet. The greatest caring for the needs of these. Traitors, liars, cowards, the least. Out of their confusion, an invitation to follow. As they settled into the familiar rhythms of the Passover, Jesus took the bread that proclaimed solidarity with the oppressed. 
with the ritual prayer Christ blessed it and then said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Out of their confusion, an invitation to follow. Once again, after supper, they settled into the familiar rhythms of Passover. Jesus took the cup, and with the ritual prayer, Christ blessed it and said, Drink with me, all of you, for this is the cup of my blood, poured out as a libation, testifying to God's covenant of forgiveness with you and the whole world. Out of their confusion, an invitation to follow. In the chaos of our own lives, we hear the invitation of Christ to follow, to find our greatness in serving and not in demanding to be served, to find our purpose in giving of our lives for the salvation of others, to find meaning in our suffering as we choose to bless instead of curse, to enter into the holy mystery of Christ, we declare, there is one life because Christ died, there is one hope because Christ arose, there is a future because Christ will come again. Howling wind, living flame, touch these gifts of bread and wine. Allow them to be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ for the transformation of our lives. Howling wind, living flame, touch the gift our lives offer to you. Allow them to be for the world, the church, and the bride of Christ for the transformation of the world. Howling wind, living flame, hover over the chaos in our community, our church, and our lives. Open our lives to the beauty of your diversity. Let all of us hear your blessing in the language of our hearts. That all may come to know you and the love you have for all of us in Jesus Christ. It is to honor Christ that we pray. It is by the joy of your Holy Spirit that we pray. It is overcome by the wonder of your glory that we pray. Almighty God, now and every day of our lives. Amen. Now as those touched by God's chaotic spirit, let us pray like Jesus saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is not a United Methodist table. It is the Lord's table. And it is open to anyone who wishes to lead a Christian life. If you do not wish to commune today, please remain seated and pray for the unity of all people. We will commune by intinction at the direction of the ushers. Please come forward, take the bread that is given, and dip it in the cup. There are gluten-free wafers available at the chancel rail, and after you commune, you may kneel at the chancel rail to pray. We do have Stephen ministers to pray with you if you would like to have someone pray with you. They are waiting to pray confidentially for the need that you mention. Now come, the table is ready.
broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you.
Let us pray. Living God, you sent the Holy Spirit to breathe life into your church. Let us no longer be captives to fear, but messengers of your saving love, so that all may be reconciled in you. Through Jesus Christ, our peace. Amen. Visions birthed and dreams restored, go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. We go, we go forth, forth as a new creation in the Spirit. Spirit. With spacious grace and depth untold, go forth in the mystery of the Holy One. Go in peace. Graduates, high school graduates, come over to the side doors. High school graduates come to the side doors. <laughs> 